So I got my saw stop about four years ago and one of the first things I did was put in this router lift table. I have a small shop, like I think a lot of you might as hobbyist woodworkers. So this router lift table on the extension of the saw stop is great. But at the time I was not as precise on my cutting. For instance, you can see up here, there's about a half inch gap and the tape I used for the T-slots ended up getting kind of like uh, crummy over time. It's a little bit proud of the work surface and on one side, it actually totally ripped off. So now it's actually kind of pointless. I can't align the fence. And to get that aligned, I have to use my saw stop fence, bring it over and align the router fence with the saw stop. It ends up being just a little bit extra work. And because of that extra work, I end up using it less because I think it's not as fun and not as quick to set up. So to make it more fun to work with, I gotta take it all apart. So one of the reasons I liked this Incra lift is you can really secure it pretty well with just a couple screws. You can do a whole bunch more like bolts and everything, but it's plenty stable with a couple screws. Then I'm taking an old cutting board off cut that I had and I'm thinning it out so it'll fit in the current resets that's there. And that will allow me to have a nice stable surface and it'll eliminate that little gap I just talked about so that the router lift fits really nicely in there and it'll be kind of aesthetically pleasing because walnut's pretty. And then of course that piece wasn't square so just taking it over to the table saw to square it up. Then I can go to the task of really cleaning out what was the old part of the router lift. Again, I didn't like that tape. It always kind of sat proud and it got kind of gross and dirty and you can just throw things in the shop, it's your shop. And then I cleaned it up with some mineral spirits and some goo gone for the really sticky kind of goo. So I'm gonna put the shaper tape right over the top here and basically make this a huge work surface. It's one of the benefits of the shaper origin is you can basically create a work surface out of anything as long as it's flat and I can cut right into that work surface because it's gonna know where it is because of the tape. This is something annoying that happens every now and then with shaper tape is it does this weird thing where when you peel it too fast, it ends up peeling itself. So that's super annoying. All right, I've put down the shaper tape. I'm hoping that this is enough to make it uh, identify everything so that I can cut things into here. Again, the first thing I have to do is cut the recess for this board, so it's gonna involve just measuring that and making sure that it can fit really nicely in there. Once it's fit in there, then I can put shaper tape over the top of that, and that will allow me to see the whole space a little bit better. So it's kind of gotta do this process first, then I can do uh, the bar cutouts. So obviously when you're a hobbyist woodworker, everything's a learning experience. And when you're cutting into your very expensive table saws, extension table to put a router lift in there, you wanna do it right. So one of the things I would recommend if you haven't cut with a shaper origin too often is don't make your opening for whatever you're putting in there perfect. You wanna give it a little bit of wiggle room, a 100th or a 10th, whatever you need to do for, so that it'll fit well for you. Because otherwise, what I found was you end up having too tight of a fit, and that's not what you want either. But once, as you can see here, you've done it, your pieces go in really well, they look really nice, and you can then just kind of sand them up and buff them and make sure they look as beautiful as you want them to look. I would guess a lot of people might use epoxy here to secure in that inlay, but I just decided to use some super glue. It seemed to work just fine. We'll see over time. If it doesn't, I'll report that back. But I already had such a tight fit with the brass that I wasn't worried about it popping up arbitrarily. And this so far has really held it down well. Then I could go into the process that's actually really interesting. And one of the reasons I wanted to try this out, which was actually engraving on brass. And as you can see here, my brass buffing could probably use a little bit of work, but the actual engraving was good. There was a couple spots where I think I was going too deep too fast. And I would just encourage you if you go for this route, Go slow, take your time, and you'll have a really nice engraving. Nice. This is looking good. It fits well. I'm very happy with that. 
And instead of using epoxy or super glue, I just pre-drilled for some screws to secure the walnut to the tabletop. I have this little dust blower that is actually for photography, and I really like it for clearing out some of that dust from those holes without having to turn your whole compressor on and be able to blow that out, or just you know constantly using your breath to blow things, especially if you're using a mask in the shop. Then I just secured some of these brass screws. I've learned with these, don't use a drill um, because you'll often break the brass screw while you're drilling it in, or if you do, make sure it's on the lowest setting. There it is, my router table upgrade is done. I'm really happy with how it turned out, which is usually the case for most of my projects, but this one especially, it was something in the shop that I just was kind of ignoring and I didn't like the look of it, I didn't like the function of it. And especially adding these brass measuring inlaid bars, it's hugely beneficial because I'm gonna be able to align this fence really easily to my bit. And if you were looking closely, you might've said, hey, your inches don't actually match the depth of your router bit and that's okay the biggest thing i was worried about was that the inches are parallel from bar to bar and that way i can set up my fence i don't care if it's one inch or two inch or three inch that's really not the biggest issue the issue is that those are parallel and i can square the fence easily and quickly to my bit i've put a bit in here i tried it out it works really well the inlaid walnut is totally aesthetic, but I think it looks nice, it adds to it, and it fixes the mistake that was there before. The Shaper Origin was really good overall in helping me inlay everything, and I learned a couple things along the way. Number one, my bars, the brass bars I bought, were literally one inch by 12 inches to the millimeter. So um, they were actually really good finds on Amazon, they worked out well, but you can't cut your whole recess to exactly that same size. They just don't fit. So I gave it a little wiggle room on each of those openings and that allowed me to inlay those with no problem. That then informed me when I put in my actual router table to just give it a little bit more breathing room and it makes it a lot easier for inlaying in it. It's not therefore perfect for my fit, but it's really darn close and it's way better than it was. And Part of that is a growth for any woodworker as you're just trying to grow and learn little things along the way so hopefully it becomes better in the end. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. If you can subscribe, that's great. Um, and hopefully I'll see you again.